Shane, over here, other side. Oh, okay, um, bro. How, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, obviously, didn't go your way last time we fought in Australia. So I guess uh, how's camp been, and any adjustments you've made between you know now and uh, th in this fight? Ah, uh, yeah. So last fight was um, the longest break between fights I've ever had, and this fight is going to be in my UFC stint. This will be the shortest. 10 year between 10 year between fights um so before i got in the ufc i used to fight much more actively like three to five times a year but circumstances made it so that uh it was hard for me to fight uh more than once a year and then we had COVID and stuff so that's really the big change is just jumping straight back into fight camp and staying more active did that long layoff play a bigger factor in your fight your last fight than kind of maybe you you let on or maybe you didn't realize until you're actually in the fight yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, when I got taken down uh, in the first round, um, it just felt so foreign. Like, it was just that, yeah, ring rust. That was really it. It was ring rust. My mind was just blank for two minutes. And then coach was just like, "Get, get can I swear? Yes. Yeah, he was like, get the fuck up. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I just got up and stood up straight away. And I was like, man, I could have done that two minutes ago. But, yeah, that's ring rust. So obviously your opponent that you're fighting has uh, not a lot of UFC experience, but I think he has, what, 15 of his 16 wins have come by submission. He's a pretty high-level grappler. So um, what do you make of the matchup you have ahead of you uh, this weekend? Uh, I mean, I fought lots of guys like him more so before I got into UFC. Uh, my old game plan used to be Sprawl and Brawl, uh, famous, made famous by Chuck Liddell. And, yes, yeah, just going back to my roots, really, in terms of how I'm going to approach this fight. Are you the first city kickboxing fighter on the card? That's, are you the one that's, of all the city kickboxing guys, are you the first one? Uh, no, my very good friend and new UFC alumni, Kevin Jusset is. And then I'm immediately after him. And then Blood Diamond. So obviously Israel said like he wants to finish this card in spectacular fashion because you guys will set the tone. So what, what has it been like in camp with everyone peaking at the same time? It's been phenomenal. With having... We've had some amazing camps in the past when we're all on the same card and I've witnessed some great things in those camps. But this camp, like there's been a few sessions where it felt like none of us, I don't know how to describe it, but I guess it's like you do the whole training session and you don't feel tired the whole time and everyone's just pushing and you look around and everyone's the same. It's like this weird energy that just lifts everybody up. And it's been like just a, a blessing to it, behold really. Last one for me. Uh, in your last few fights leading up to it, you've been pretty outspoken of like what young men are going through back in New Zealand and stuff. And Israel's documentary just came mm -hmm. out. And he said that if you, if not for anything, even if you're not an MMA fan, he thinks young men should just watch this documentary if they can pull anything of it. So have you seen the documentary and what did you make of that and what he thinks? Yep. Yep. I watched it uh, in Auckland. We all went there as a gym and watched the New Zealand premiere. And I was so surprised by it. Um, before this, my favorite MMA documentary was um, Notorious by Conor McGregor. But this is just way more, he's way more vulnerable and way more real and open, like the real Israel that I know. And, and especially at this current time that we're in for, I guess, males in society, it's, I feel like it's so needed. And a lot of people can get inspired by it to go forward and move out of the, like a dark place and motivate themselves to do bigger things in the world. Yeah. Shane, I was going to ask you, man, I know you uh, mentioned on IG the last time you fought in Sydney, it was about five years ago and you were kind of on hostile territory. And now you feel really welcomed going into this one. Take us into that a little bit. And also, I suppose, the feeling of where you and your team is compared to back five years ago when it was a little bit different? Yeah, so funnily enough, I was kind of, I guess, in a way, the first CKB fighter to get in the UFC because Dan was already in the UFC before we all started training together. Um, so it was everything was new. It was all a new experience, but it was weird because I was fighting Alex Volkanovsky, who was kind of a mate at the time. Um, but it was the first time I've ever come out and been booed and that was like a new experience but I just, it just it, it was fine at the time but from there five five or so years ago to now it feels like we are really Anzacs Australia and New Zealand there's no there's no um, 
animosity between us that we're just a unified front taking on the rest of the world. Um, and that's, that's awesome. And I know there's a few rumors floating around about potentially a card in Auckland next year. I just wonder, what would that mean to you to be able to potentially uh, have the FC come to Auckland and for you guys and for yourself to potentially be on a card on some home soil? Yeah, that's, I have to be on that card. Uh, we've had two uh, UFC Auckland cards and I've not fought on either of them. The last one I was a, oh, actually I was a spectator at both of them. Um, but I just, yeah, I have to be on that card. And I think it would be great for New Zealand MMA, uh, for the scene, like the local scene, because um, to be honest, our local scenes, when I was coming up, when I was fighting, there were more there were more fights, there were more promotions. And I just think maybe since COVID that it sort of slowed down a bit. So I'm hoping that that UFC Auckland card could help make some new promotions branch out or create some more fights for everybody to get get some fights on their record and then fight overseas instead of beating up each other. Shane, just over here. Yeah, right. So, Shane, obviously, you know, this is a big fight, big opportunity here in Sydney. Are you looking at this fight as almost an opportunity to hit the reset button on your career a little bit? Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, because... Um, I've never, you know, this is a new territory for me, being on a three-fight uh, losing stint. Um, and it feels like do or die for me um, with this fight. Um, I mean, I know I'm not yet in my physical prime. So for me, it's just it's just trying to get out there and prove to myself what, what all the years of hard work that I've put in and um, yeah, I don't know if I answered that correctly, but. And, you know, talking on that pressure then, does it, you know, does it change your preparation at all in camp heading into this fight, whether it's, you know, additional physical work or whether it's, you know, working on the mental side of the game? Yeah, mainly the second part that you said, working on the mental side of the, of the game, because um, we, as fighters, we're like almost living in that uh, sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight from day to day. If you train four times in a day, you've only got like an hour and a half between each training session. And in that hour and a half, it can t it's quite hard to get your nervous system back down. So my focus has been a lot on my, on my mental uh, preparation and, and trying to focus on the positive things about this because it can be very scary, I guess, if you look at it from like, oh, three fight losing streak, um, fighting in Sydney, big crowd, six people, like you can or you can let that overwhelm you or you can let it motivate you and, and build you up and let that energy um, build you up so you rise to the occasion. Um, Shane, um, obviously a teammate and friend of yours, Israel Adesanya, um, getting the win back in April against Alex Pereira, did that add any extra motivation to you for this camp, seeing him get that win in, in that last fight? Yeah, 100%. It was like that whole uh, finishing exchange was like an emotional roller coaster. It was a movie. Watching him get that calf kick and then back up against the fence, I was like, oh, no, standing up on my feet. I had my son in my hands. I was like, no, no, no. And then whack, whack. He just drops him with that right hand. I ended up like screaming and my son started crying. But I'm, yeah, I'm sure he knew it was all good things. But it, it was a, more of a reminder that we are uh, – in a in a very special time by we i mean city kickboxing we, we are part of a very special time that's happening right now in this sport and it's only a young sport it's only 30 years old but it just it motivates me to just be around the gym and and of just yeah to be more of a witness as well as a participant like it, it's a weird thing sometimes you know i'm in here doing this uh fight card there's six of us but also once i finish my fight i'm here to witness the greatness unfold from all my other teammates. Uh, just one more for me. Um, Kevin Jusset makes his uh, UFC debut this weekend, um, and he's a guy that we've known about here in Australia nice. for a little while. Um, but I just want to get your take and, and let the let the public know um, what what Kevin's going to bring to the UFC. Kevin is a legit threat in every way. Um, I was surprised that he's only thirty because of his like 
technical knowledge in so many different parts of the game, I was like, man, he needs to get in the UFC fast because he must be pushing 38 or something. <laughs> Just because he's so skilled. He's so skilled. He's so strong athletically. Um, and from when he's come to the gym uh, like three or four years ago to now, his his game has become so well-rounded because we everyone knows he's a judo black belt, basically a jiu-jitsu black belt. But his striking and how he, he how he mixes all those parts of the game has really evolved, and he's going to be a, a a menace in the welterweight division. Just, cheer, bro. Yeah, just hello. Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. How do you feel the main event going to play out on on Saturday or Sunday? I think it's going to be a lot like uh, when Izzy fought Paulo Costa. Uh, yeah, basically that. It's just it's gonna be a lot like Paulo Costa. Um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Kia ora, Shane. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora, Ravinda. Um, I hear you talking about you know that mental strength and things, and I know that you have said in the past that you do summon and turn to your taha Māori in times like that. I know we've had quoted all about this before, but you know how much of that and whakapapa lineage do you summon, you know, on a week like this when you've got such a goal set in front of you? Yeah, it's it's something that uh, I don't I don't feel I feel like I'm in uncharted territory every time I fight. I feel like I'm a oh, it's going to sound like self-centered, but I'm like a pioneer in a lot of ways. So uh, for Maori athletes or something I don't know but I feel like I don't try try not to overthink it and I almost create my own uh traditions uh like I still I still you know do try uphold um to our traditions of like karakia and things that are sacred in that way but I also feel like it's, it's a bit uncharted territory because I got no I've got no one to base what I should do off other than guys like Israel and um, you know he's from an indigenous culture in, in Nigeria, so I feel like I'm just making a bit of a a, a, mold, a mixing pot and making my own mold. Yeah. I also wanted to ask about pukana. I know that you perform pukana on stage, particularly at face-offs, and mm. Kai does too. So, is there any sort of training in that aspect of um, who has the better pukana? <laughs> No, nah, we've done. I've done a little bit with someone because I, I I started doing. He's like, nah, bro, you gotta show your teeth more. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's so true. So I've done a little bit, but um, nah, not a serious uh, serious pukana training. But maybe we'll do a pukana off one day. Kapai, thank you. Thank you, Shane over here. Uh, oh, you talked uh, earlier, and it's it's kind of a theme about this special time in city kickboxing history right now where you've got just so many so many high level people not only in the UFC or making their debut or fighting at high level here in Australia or in New Zealand does this feel kind of like the, the city kickboxing show a little bit you've got so many teammates on the card what is going on right now at city kickboxing um honestly when we fight on cards it normally with especially with Israel as the headliner it it does feel like the city kickboxing show feels like we've got a big target on our back for the haters and then from everyone that's like a a, a supporter they just want to come and like hang out with us uh but this is the biggest you know six six fighters from the same gym out of a 12 fight card i think that's like a record or it's unprecedented um, but what is happening at City Kickboxing? I mean, well, I've said it, if you watch some of my older interviews before I got into the UFC and Tyson said it, other people that have moved to the gym, they, they've said it, that we're a family. We have a family environment, so much so that like, if you've got an uncle who's who you love, but he's super invasive in your life to the point where you're like, fuck, fuck off, uncle. That's uh, Those are my coaches. <laughs> Like, not fuck off, but, you know, like, they love you so much that they want to be involved and want to make sure that everything's going okay. It's not, it's not like, huge and Mike in particular. They do so much for me outside of just my training. Um, and I think what we're getting is a reflection of that where we everyone feels, I don't know, I guess safe and comfortable to really try and push for this thing and we're all, we're all, 
you know, we wake up and we enjoy going to see each other because like sometimes training can be hard, but it's made a lot easier when you got guys like my brother, John Vake over there who are helping you and, and supporting you and making you feel good about yourself when you feel down or you can do the same to them and not feel like you're being a, a jack off or yeah, it's, it's, it's a family environment and we, we love what we do. Awesome. Thank you very much. Kia ora, uh, kia ora. Oh, no, nah, not this guy. Oh, hey, hey, man. It's not Next like question, it. please. No. Oh, hey, uh, no, for real, though. Serious question. Okay. Uh, do you feel that, um, like, in terms of Aotearoa and New Zealand, that it's making progress, you know, with everybody there with MMA? Do you feel that there's some type of progress in being accepted more than it was when you first started? What do you mean? Say again. Say you know what I mean. You know, like um, you mean like like blood sport type stuff. Yeah, how you know, like we're still kind oh. of in the dark ages when it comes. Yeah, to that. yeah. I don't even like. I got blinders on with that stuff, bro. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand that. Uh, but I can see it. Say with when it comes to say like trying to find sponsors and stuff. Like over here in Australia, I know from my friends that have moved over from Australia, they've they find it easier to get sponsors because people don't, there are some people in New Zealand that are like, what is this? Like, this is barbaric. But I think a lot of that is that, that tall poppy stuff that we always talk about. And yeah, I mean, I, ho I hope there's going to be progress, but I just, I just have blinders on to that stuff because I've got my, I've got my corner. I've got my sponsors. I know what we're doing is great. And I try to be a good representative for, martial arts and promote people getting into martial arts and uh i think i actually think after this weekend things will there will be a massive change with in regards to that and in terms of um you know the sydney crowd uh, a lot of warriors fans coming over here for saturday oh, can we just yeah. get a straight up what uh, up the up wires, the wires. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> with a worldwide audience there yes that's our year <laughs> Shane again, just over here. Uh, you mentioned uh, just before about uh, John Varke with uh, Kevin Ducey uh, signing to the uh, to the UFC. He is vacating his hex titles. Uh, Ducey has mentioned uh, he would like to see Varke fight for one of those uh, those hex titles. What we what would be your thoughts on that? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, John is is premier. He's he's an elite fighter. Um, there's he's an example of an elite fighter that just needs the opportunity. So he's at a point in his career where people don't want to fight him because he's, he's got a, a great record and he's on the cusp of getting into the UFC, but they don't, they want to, you know, people want to fight. When we were coming up, when John and I were coming up in this game, the best fought the best. Now you get kids that are like, they want to make their, they want to be five and zero and fight a guy on his debut. So like John, John deserves to take that welterweight title and probably move up and get the middleweight title. Who knows? Thank you. Yeah, up the wires. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>